Good afternoon. This is Nicole Grunucci and this is going to be your lecture on circuits. So I'll break this up into a, a few parts, probably about four parts, and go over a little bit about circuits, um, particularly about the components of a circuit, the requirements to make something like a circuit work, and more importantly, talk about a few of these things. So I'm going to talk about what makes a circuit, talk about electric current and what it means uh, for an ampere, the conditions to actually make a circuit work, how to draw circuits, talk about resistance and Ohm's law. If we have time, I'll talk about power, but we'll see how we go with this. And this is going to be your lecture replacement for tonight. So basically, this is the video that I would have done anyway tonight. So let us begin. So take a second and read these. I'm not going to read them, but I'd like you to pause the video and try these out on your own and see if these are true or false. So why don't you do that? Press pause. Okay. Now that you've tried that, we're going to answer most of these questions. Um, you know, what does it mean to be out of charge? Um, in this case, it's the, you know, where does the charge come from? That's another big question, whether or not charge moves at high speeds and the amount of charge in general of a circuit. So we'll continue on. First of all, charges are the flow of electrons. Now we talked before in our previous lecture that protons are bound to the nucleus, so it's the outside um, charges that move, which are electrons. Um, charges like protons can move, but not in a natural state. So when there is a flow of charges, specifically electrons, we're going to have what is called a current. So it turns out electrons, this is the arbitrary good view of the electrons. So these little dots are supposed to be the electrons right here, and they all move in a direction. Now, electrons actually don't move in a straight line like this. They actually move kind of like all over the place. That's what this is right here. So we say they have a drift velocity. This is just in real life. That Don't worry, we're not going to calculate this. But in essence, the electrons will move um, you know, in a, in a line. But it's not in a straight line, so it's pretty cool. So we call this electrical current, the flow of electrons. Now when we measure current, um, we can do that by measuring a flow. So let me get this up here. So Q represents charge. So these little minus signs represent the electrons right there. So this is the amount of charge in coulombs. And how much charge passes by per time. So let me put the rest of this up here so you see what I got here. All right, so let me go back for a second. There we go. So Q here represents charge. And that's going to be in the unit of coulombs, the value of our charge. T is how much time it takes for that charge to pass. So it's literally a flow rate. Now remember, flow rate, if you sort of remember, is the amount of stuff, so in this case, charge, per time. And rate means time. So this is a flow rate. Now we measure charge, I'm sorry, we measure current in this um, unit called amperes, which represents basically charge per, um, or coulomb per second, sorry, is an ampere. That is by definition. And we use the symbol A. And the symbol I is for current, so capital I. Sometimes electrical engineers will use little i, but a capital I is what we use in science. So one ampere is equal to one coulomb of charge per second. So if this were a time of exactly one second, and we say that there are five coulombs of charge, I'm just making this up here, the current would be five coulombs of charge per one second, or five amps, like that. So that is how we measure charge, or at least the current of a uh, system right here is through the number of charges per time. So in the next problem, I'll actually do out an example. So here's a sample question. So in this we have a steady current of 4.5 amps and exists in a wire for 2.33 minutes. How much charge passes by during the given point and how many electrons will this be? Okay, 
So I could solve this. Let's not use, I don't like blue. I can change it to, there we go. Change it to um, black here. Okay, so we're gonna be using this idea where current is equal to Q divided by T. Now T has to be in seconds, so there we go. So first of all, I see a red flag and that's in minutes. So 2.33 minutes is equal to, let's do that out, 2.33. I'm on my calculator times 60. Gives me my time in seconds, 139.8 seconds. So I want to know how much charge. So that is going to be Q. Total charge is Q. So here we go. I equals Q over T. My I will be this, which is the amp. I for amperage. And then our T will be this number right here. Time in seconds. So remember, this has to be in seconds. So I'll plug in our numbers. This is for part A. 4.5 amps equals Q, which we're solving for divided by 139.8 seconds. So if I'm solving for Q, I gotta multiply both sides by 139. So when I do that, 4.5 amps times 139.8 seconds equals, and this will be 629 point one coulombs of charge. That's actually a pretty big number because remember one electron is a fixed value. Right, so this is the charge for what electron? And then we have, and see the negative 19th? I mean, that's a very, very small number. So the second part is how many electrons would this be? Well, a lot. <laughs> so what we have a total of is 629, 629.1 coulombs. And I'm gonna make a conversion factor. So there is 1.6 to the negative 19th coulombs in every one electron. And that's my symbol for electron, negative. I'm not making you know something negative here. But basically, I'm dividing this number by that number, so 629.1 divided by 1.6 to negative 19. I get a lot of electrons. I get 5.9 times 10 to the 21st electron. So that is a lot. So very, I mean, to the 21st, it, that's huge. So, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's a lot of electrons right there. So this is a pretty big number um, when you do this. And this is pretty reasonable, actually, when you get this. So um, a lightning bolt has about 10 coulombs. So there you go. That's at least some perspective. So pretty interesting. So that's how you solve a problem like this. This would be the official answer to this problem right here. And that's how we can use current to find the number of charges and if we need to, the number of electrons. So this number is very good to have your on your equation sheet as a constant. So have that there. All right, let's move on. Pretty neat, huh? This is called a Moby, and I can draw on my screen. So technological, very fun. What's next? Okay, so now that we talked about current as a flow of electrons, the question, the question is, where did they come from? Well, originally, and even I thought that they came from the batteries, right? The batteries make the electrons, and they go, um, well, batteries don't make electrons. And the electrons do not terminate as they get to the light bulb. So what, has, what does happen here? So let me get out of this 
and let me show you this. So I'm going to grab a wire and if you notice when I grab a wire you can see there's blue dots. Can you guess what they are? Did you say electrons? You're so right! Look at you! Amazing! Yeah, these blue dots here are electrons. They're already in the wire. Let me grab another wire. Oh, look! More electrons. A little bit of battery. Oh, yeah. There's definitely electrons in this battery. What about a light bulb? Yep. So check it out. In all these cases here, there are electrons present. Pretty cool, huh? And watch what happens when I make a circuit for now. We'll talk about the requirements in a second. And there you go. So here is our flow of electrons. And you can see the electrons go through the light bulb. They go through the battery. We never created the electrons. They were already there. And if you remember, we can measure the current by measuring the flow. So we have to put this inside to measure the flow and we get a current flow of 0.9 amps. Just like that. So pretty cool. The electrons are in the circuit um, and they're not from anything particular. So if we go back to here, so the power company does not make electrons and they don't go away. And electrons are actually pretty slow. They're very, very slow. They go about one meter per second. Now you think they go fast because as soon as you turn on a switch of a light bulb, the light comes on immediately. Well, that's because they're already there. It's like standing in line at the front door. You know, if you're right there, you're going to go through that door pretty quickly as if you, instead of being, you know, down the hall. It takes time to get to that door. So, in this case, you're right there. So the speed of electrons are very, very slow um, in this case. So something else that matters, um, we will talk a little bit more about circuits, but the direction of the battery also matters a lot. The batteries provide the push of the electrons. That's their job, is to push them, not to make them. And when we reverse the battery, the push goes the other way. So we got two directions, clockwise or counterclockwise. And if they go in one direction, we call it a direct current, or DC. So let me finish this, and this will be the first part. So if you look here, the battery is going in, well, the current's going in one direction. It's going counterclockwise. I can reverse the battery, reverse, counter. So the battery's pushing in a different way. And since it's only going one direction, this is called a DC circuit. What's AC? Let's take out the battery and put AC. AC stands for alternating current, which means it goes back and forth. I'm going to make this actually pretty large. Let's make this battery large so you can see it drastically. And watch this. Notice that they go forward and backward, forward and backward. So this is an AC circuit, alternating circuit, or alternating current, because it goes back and forth, two directions. And this is what comes out of your wall, an AC. Batteries are DC. So let's pause this and write this down. And that will be the first part. Do I have that? Yep. Right there. So let's write this down. So batteries, and I have this on the next slide, are DC, direct current, and wall outlets are AC for alternating. Spell that wrong, alternating, alternating. Just like that. And if you notice, with the alternating current, if I, you could see that it's turning on and off. That actually happens, but it happens so quickly that our eyes can't see it. It happens 60 times a second, or 60 hertz. So pretty neat. So this concludes this portion of our lecture. I'll start lecture two next.